Okay, so I bought a Minn Kota Max 55 with the digital maximizer that's supposed to save on battery power uh, by giving it just the power that the motor needs. And I really didn't like it because, for one thing, it shook and vibrated too much. And uh, forward speed was all right, but reverse was really slow and sluggish. I didn't like the, the way it went in reverse. I did like the variable speed, though, versus the uh, five-speed click switch that they, they have in the older style or the C2 styles. That is actually that switch right there. So, anyway... I looked online and I seen this 60 amp speed controller, PWM speed controller, for 20 bucks. And I said to myself, well, might as well give it a try. If it doesn't work, I'm out 20 bucks. And it's a heck of a lot cheaper than what those, uh, the Minn Kota Max or the Traxxas that has the digital maximizer also. They're pretty expensive. So this is a. A lot cheaper but anyway I got it hooked up and the way I hooked it up is in the top of this you have your power coming in two wires hot and negative and then you have the black and red going down the tube into your motor which is the hot and negative that go to the brushes and then you have a yellow and a white one that hook up to the built-in potentiometer that's in the prop housing on the back of the brushes that's epoxied right in there to keep it waterproof and that's all those two wires are for is just for speed control okay so the way I hooked this up was I deleted those two wires and just went right with the black and red wire that comes up from the tube um, I'm not going to need the yellow or white anymore because this uh, speed controller will do that job for it okay so I got it hooked up and this is supposed to be 60 amps continuous current which should be more than enough to handle this uh, 55 pound thrust trolling motor that's only supposed to uh, draw 50 at most so I got it hooked up and I don't know if this is a soft start, what they call a soft start. I don't believe it is. So with this, the potentiometer, this is what I used to control the speed with in forward or reverse, also is an off switch. So the way I'm going to use this is to keep it off. And this also acts as an off switch. Left and right, it's off. Uh, on off on switch actually but it'll, I'm going to use it as left or forward and reverse rather and you can also shut it off by the middle position so the way I'm going to use this it doesn't matter which side you hook the wire up to um, either side is going to be forward or reverse so I'm going to say that's forward I'm not sure yet when I put it in the box if it's not right I'll just flip it that way and it'll be forward or reverse. I'll have my forward to the right and reverse to the left when I actually get it all set up. Okay, so I got it on. I got the button turned on. And now I'll turn the potentiometer on. And as you can see, this start you can start this thing out slow, slow. And that's a lot slower than first speed in that, in that switch that comes with this motor. And then can gradually turn it up till you hit the speed you want right to full and this thing has even got a little digital display that shows you it's at a hundred percent and I can turn I, it's you're probably gonna see this flashing because I can see it flashing but it actually doesn't flash it's just the way the camera's picking it up all I can go down to 50%
49.50 and it seems to hold wherever you put it so if this thing is durable and it lasts this is going to be great and also like I said I had this on for a while before and nothing seems to get warm contrary to the switch that's that comes with it if I use it for a while on full speed the wires in the switch do get warm as a matter of fact I burned a switch up uh, on the lake last week and got stranded out there and had to row back but it was the switch went bad and shorted out and fried the couple of the wires so I put a new switch on top and made sure all the wire connections were crimped tight and took it back out and it seems to stay a lot cooler and it works great now um, but anyway yeah this thing uh, I'm gonna make a little box for it and mount it somewhere where I can reach it easy and right now I got it running off this Sears jump starter with a LED voltage readout on it and it's saying 12.4 and that's pretty good because the battery isn't the greatest in this in this thing and I had it running for a while and I got it running at 50% power so I'll turn it up to 100% uh, It's showing it's drawing it down to 12.2 volts and it's kind of holding steady there now on the other hand when I want to try this motor out without the maximizer on it without the uh, speed controller on it I hook this battery directly up to the negative and positive wire that goes down to the brushes and it dragged this battery right down for some reason I don't know why I don't, maybe something to do with uh, not being hooked up to the internal potentiometer that's in there but with this on there it's it's holding really steady I mean like I say I've had this for a while and this battery isn't the greatest this battery does run down quick if I use it on the boat for other things like uh, my boat stereo and stuff I mean it'll last for a while but by the time I get it home it's definitely ready for a good charge but it's holding right steady there at uh 12.2 right now and I got that at a hundred percent everything seems to be cool if this thing isn't warm at all I mean this is actually cool And I was worried if I put this in an, in an enclosure, I'm going to have to to keep it waterproof, keep the water off in it. Uh, if if it was going to heat up being in the enclosure, but I really, at this point, don't think it is. Because if this was going to get warm, it would at least start to be getting warm by now. Even these wires are cool, really cool to the touch. I, I really didn't check to see how cool the uh, prop housing was, but <laughs> this thing is cooler. When I worked on this motor and got it going and let it run for a while to make sure it was going to be all right, this thing actually got warm using that switch. This thing is not warm at all. I mean at all, even with the sun shining on it. But I'll tell you what. If this holds up and it's durable, this is a hell of a lot cheaper than buying one of those Max motors. I mean, if you if you have a regular motor, an older style like this, or one of the C2 models, and they do sell these in uh, lower amps, 40 amps, 30 amps. So if you had like a 30 pound thrust that would pull 36 or whatever odd amps you probably want to get the 40 just to uh, stay on the safe side the 40 amp speed controller so 
the, supposedly this pulls this one I'm using now pulls 50 amps and this is 60 continuous so I should be above the threshold there or below the threshold whatever you want to say and uh, yeah it works really good and another thing I'm going to do I'm going to look online and see if I can find a heavy duty 60 amp on off on switch that I could put between this and the other switch in case anything happens to this all I have to do is switch over and I could still use the five speed switch that way I won't be stuck but uh yeah I'm gonna got some ABS sheets and I'm gonna make a box for this today or tomorrow and bring it up to the lake and try it out but what I'm going to do this time is bring another trolling motor with me in case it, something happens to it. At least I'll be able to get back. And I'll update when uh, I see how this works. I'm going to give it a good workout. I'll be using it probably four or five hours. So if it lasts beyond that, I'm going to call it good for now. And uh, yeah, I'll let you know how we make out with it anyway. Also, I, I seen a couple other videos where people made kind of homemade speed controllers. And the way they had it hooked up was just like cumbersome. It was, this is pretty much plug and play. Power in, power out. And it doesn't matter what side you have the power out because all you have to do is turn your switch whatever way you want it. And it's, uh, like I say, it's plug and play pretty easy. Okay, that's it. I'll let you know.